Hello again and welcome back to our course on PSC 2018. In this section we're going to take our first look at keywords and tags. If you've used keywords and tags in an earlier version of PSC, particularly one that's relatively recent, then you can probably skip this section. For those of you who haven't used keywords and tags before, let me just explain one very important aspect of what we're doing in this section. Earlier on in the course, I explained that you really need to understand catalogues reasonably well before you set up your own catalogue or catalogues and start to use them. Very much the same is true of keywords and tags. If you don't plan to use keywords and tags, and you may not yet have made that decision, you can set them up later on, and you can do whatever work needs to be done to implement them later on. But if you are planning to use them, and in particular if when you find out about them in this section you decide that they're definitely going to be a good idea for you, it really will be helpful if you can at least get started on the structure of your keywords and tags, the taxonomy of your keywords and tags, before you capture too many images into PSE. As you'll see, particularly in this section, having a structure in place will greatly reduce the amount of work you need to do later on when it comes to tagging your images with the keywords that we're going to be setting up. So first of all I'm going to give you an overview of keywords and tags in this section. Then I'm going to show you how to set up your own structure, your own taxonomy. We'll look at assigning keywords to images how to filter using keywords and finally I'll show you some of the major options for developing your structure further. Let's start with some terminology keywords and tags. I'm sure that somewhere there is a definition of exactly what the difference is between keywords and tags in PSE but for most people that use PSE that I know including many of the reference sources on PSE, the terms keyword and tag tend to be used quite interchangeably and I tend to use them quite interchangeably as well. A keyword to me would be something like horse and I may apply the keyword horse to a number of images in my catalogue and I will generally tend to refer to that as tagging an image with a keyword. But to be fair, these terms, as I say, are used pretty interchangeably, and that's what I'm going to do as well. To see the tags or keywords on an image, and I won't keep saying the word twice, if you go to the Keyword Info panel and click on the Tags option, you'll see four categories of tags. There are People tags, Places tags, and Events tags, all of these we're going to look at later on in the course, so I'm going to pretty much ignore them for now. The first one is the Keywords category. And if I expand the Keywords category, you'll see the default structure of keywords that comes with a new installation of PSE. And there are four categories, Nature, Colour, Photography and Other. And starting with these four categories, you can develop your own taxonomy, your own structure. Now one of the first questions is going to be what are keywords there for? And that's one of the things I'm going to explain early on in this section. And in fact in this section we'll mainly use keywords for filtering what's shown in the catalogue. Later on in the course we'll look at searching and keywords can play a very important part in searching your catalogue to find specific images with specific properties. So it's time now for me to start to develop a taxonomy for me to use in my catalogue. Clearly you may want a completely different structure to the structure that I'm going to create. So if you are working along with me you may well want to do what I'm doing but maybe you'll want to set up your own structure at the same time. You will have noticed by now that many of the pictures I take are out of doors, in fact almost all of them are, and they generally tend to be of either natural subjects or of cities. I travel quite a bit and I like to take a lot of pictures wherever I am. 
Now I'm going to start with the nature side of things and there is actually a nature keyword but that's far too general for me. What I really need to do is to split nature into some subcategories. So I'm going to right click on nature and one of the options there is create new subcategory and my new subcategory name is going to be coast. Note that its parent category is nature. Click on OK. And I've now got a second level entry in my keyword structure. I'm now going to create another subcategory of nature and this one I'm going to call mountains. So if by accident here I right click on coast say create new subcategory mountains if I've accidentally got the wrong parent it's pretty easy just change the parent I want it to be nature and mountains will appear in the correct place within the taxonomy I've got one more to add and note this time I correctly selected the parent before I did the add so there we are that's the beginnings of my structure it's time now to assign keywords to images and there's a particular image here this one which was taken on the banks of a river and I'm going to assign the keyword lakes and rivers to this image so I'm going to click on lakes and rivers in the tags panel on the right drag it onto this picture note the shape of that little icon there drop it onto the image and that image now has a keyword assigned you probably just noticed a little icon that appeared there in the bottom left hand corner but also if you look to the right of the date down here underneath the image you can see a little keyword and tag icon there and if you hover over it you can see that tool tip keyword tag lakes and rivers so that's one way of assigning a keyword to an image. You can also do it the other way. If I click on the image, the one to the right was also taken by the same river. If I click on that, notice make sure you get the hand icon and I drag it up to lakes and rivers and drop it on lakes and rivers. That's the same effect even though I've done it the other way around. Let me go a little bit further down the catalogue. I've got some pictures here that were taken at the coast so let me select the first one hold the shift key down select the last one so I've got a whole range selected there click on any one of those check I've got the hand icon note the multiple images under the hand icon drop it on coast and as far as mountains goes I've got three over here it's not really much of a mountain but it'll do for the moment and again drop that onto mountains and one other thing that I should mention here apart from assigning keywords is that you may want to remove a keyword so let me right click on one of the mountain pictures remove keyword tag mountains and that keyword tag is no longer assigned to that particular picture Let's look now at filtering because one of the main reasons that you may use keywords is to filter. So let's suppose I've got my catalogue open and I want to look at all the images of coast. Let me just check coast in the keyword structure on the right. There are all my coast pictures. What about the ones that are coast and mountains? There aren't any. When it comes to more complex types of question, we very often revert to using the pretty sophisticated PSE search. And we're going to look at that later on. And the search very often will use keywords that you've assigned. If you want to clear a particular filter, whether or not any results have been found, there is a clear button up here. And that basically clears any filters that are applied. And now you can see all of the current contents of the catalogue again. What I'm going to do now is to develop my structure quite a bit more. I'm going to get rid of one of these categories, colour. I'm not really going to be using colour, so if I right click on it, one of the options is delete. 
and that removes that category altogether. Note the warning there, deleting this category will delete all of its subcategories and keyword tags and remove those keyword tags from all items. There's also a note there about something called saved searches. I'll talk about saved searches later. But if you are going to delete a category that has been used, this is basically warning you of something that's probably fairly obvious really, that that category will basically disappear altogether and anywhere that you've relied on it for identification purposes and to use in searches and so on, all of that will be gone as well. In my case I haven't used that color category at all so far so it's a pretty safe bet to delete it. Now one of the things that I want is a new part of the structure at all to cover animals so I'm going to create a new top level category. If I go to that little plus sign there I can create a new category. The first thing to do is to choose a color for this category I'm going to make it a different color to the others. I think I'll go for that sort of reddy brown color there. That's fine. I give the category a name. I'm going to call it animals. And I can choose a category icon. It's a picture of a dog there. That will do. Now I've started a new top level category and I'm going to create some subcategories. I'll do that next and you can join me in just a moment. So in that way I can start to build up a very sophisticated structure for my keywords. I may get to a point where a particular keyword is no longer, if you like, subject to subdivision. I may get to what you might call the leaf of a tree. And let's suppose that under ponies I want a category of Shetland pony, but I'm not going to further subdivide Shetland ponies. What I can do then, if I right click, is not create a new subcategory but create a new keyword tag and a keyword tag is basically a leaf of a tree it's where the tree can no longer be subdivided so on this occasion Shetland Pony will be a leaf of the tree I can put a note in there if I want to I can also edit the icon to be used for this particular leaf of the tree. I can indeed import an icon from elsewhere. On this occasion I'll just go with the default, click on OK and Shetland Pony is now part of my taxonomy. Having done that I might well now want to go through and start assigning tags to some of the images in my catalogue. Let me do just a couple. Now before we do some filtering with my new category, one other thing to mention here, I've kept that photography category and I may use any number of categories to categorize and identify my images in many different ways. What I'm going to do is to subdivide the photography category into two subcategories. So having divided photography into landscape and portrait, I'm now going to assign those keywords to a selection of the images in my catalogue. Once again, join me in just a moment. So I've assigned many of those keywords to many of the images. I haven't done them all. I haven't done it very consistently, but I just want to give you a flavour of what's possible. Let me first of all look at all of the pictures which have got any kind of animal in them. So I'm just going to check animals and I'll now see every picture with an animal in it. If I only want to see the landscape pictures I would check landscape as well. And if I don't want all animals let me uncheck animals. I'll now get all landscape pictures Let's suppose I just want horses and ponies. There are the horses and ponies ones. What about the ones that are just Shetland pony pictures? I get those and so on. So in that way I can do a much more sophisticated filter of the contents of my catalogue. And there's just one other thing to mention before the end of this section. I explained the significance of a keyword tag if you like a leaf of a tree such as Shetland Pony. If you have created a leaf of a tree let me right click on Shetland Pony. You can subsequently change it to a subcategory if you need to further subdivide it at a later stage. 
But that's the end of this section. I'll see you in the next one. Hey everyone, Simon here. Thanks for watching. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe to our channel. And click over there to get a free three hour course for learning the essentials of Photoshop Elements 2018. And click over there to get the complete list of videos in this playlist. I'll see you next week with additional videos.